Hello everyone, this is the LEGO Architecture Skylines series miniature representation of Las Vegas. From a distance it is definitely recognizable thanks to a good choice of landmarks and I think that up close it continues to be fairly charming. This has uh, a lot of varied build techniques, nothing ultimately too fancy in terms of how the assembly process has to go but there was definitely quite a lot of hard work that went into designing this. A lot of interesting techniques had to be used to make best use of small spaces. Let's look at this from left to right up close. First of all, the Welcome to Las Vegas sign over there is a printed 1x2 clear tile piece, so not a sticker, which is great. It has a good level of detail on it. You know, it's pretty nicely printed up and is definitely a good place to invest in a little, you know, a little extra expense, I think, in the, the design of this set to get that detail in there. And then here's the Bellagio. This looks pretty proper. Uh, it was very important, of course, to get the fountains outside that uh, you know, are showing a little bit of animation. And these, these pieces actually sparkle a little bit. You know, they've got the fully clear transparent pieces used on the base above medium blue. So it you know, has a little bit of depth there and they're trying to show a little bit of movement. The building itself has some angles uh, just subtle angles that are uh, well, angles you don't really usually see in Lego. However, everything is placed here using legal techniques. It was interesting to put together, even though it looks like it's a little bit repetitive. I actually enjoyed putting this part together, and I'm even happier with how it turned out. In the end, I think the individual components didn't look quite so good, but when you assemble it all together, it definitely makes sense and uh, is is well worth the time to carefully line up some of the one by two and one by one pieces just make sure that when you build something like this you build it with easy access to a very hard flat surface you know a glass table or something that's otherwise equally hard and very smooth and flat so you can just line up all the pieces very easily helps a lot uh, you do get these columns on the back but they were very important for the structure of this. I'm glad that they did go with the full depth to get this rear wing of it in there. They didn't just, you know, cut it off there. And yeah, this definitely works out. You can also see the next thing we're gonna look at is the Luxor Hotel. And it's just cut right down the, the center. It's black, all black, no printed pieces, no different colors. They don't try to simulate the beacon light at the top of it, but looking at it from the front, of course, you get the pyramid, excuse me, the pyramid, the sphinx in front of it, and that does not use a, a, a printed headpiece, minifig headpiece, it's just a plain one, which I think is actually the right decision to go with here, because I think if they put a face there, it just would have drawn so much attention, you know, our brains are just attuned to human faces, and sometimes even seeing faces and things that don't have faces, so this, this, uh, kind of helps to just avoid, I think, attracting too much attention there by leaving it plain. But uh, I still think it looks pretty fancy. Still one of my favorite looking things here. I, I, I liked the build of the Bellagio, but uh, just the, the appearance of this here is is pretty nice with the, the print for the headdress area. And then this is the Encore at Wynn Las Vegas. A curved building it is, and they, you know, they don't have the, the original win here. They're not trying to uh, you know, show that two would have just required too much of the space here. So they chose just one, and this is a curved building. It's curved away from you, away from the street. They have the large sign down below, a little bit of greenery, shrubbery, and that's shaped up just a little bit so it's not too boring. Uh, again, unusual angles are used here. If you look at this directly from the top, you can see how it's bent a couple of times, but there are no uh, uncouth techniques used here. Everything is perfectly on the up and up. There are no stressed pieces. No no parts are, are physically under tension or bending there, so that's all good design. I personally think perhaps this could have been done in dark brown. It would have looked a little bit closer to the black of 
of the, the Luxor next to it, but maybe this is a little bit bright. Also, when you when you look at this directly from the side, as we, we almost are here, the top of the building doesn't give you quite a smooth, you know, just single line there. Uh, from any other angle, it's not obvious at all. It looks it looks pretty perfect, but just from the side. It's a very nitpicky thing, but it can bug you maybe the first time you notice it, if you're looking at it uh, on display, kind of at eye level. But I don't think there's anything they could have done to do that any better, personally. And then, of course, this is the Stratosphere Las Vegas with its curved sides. You can kind of fake that. You can kind of make it curve in a little bit more by leaving these, these rubbery pieces are pulling them a little bit farther out of what they're attached to. They tend to want to spring themselves back in, but you can kind of accentuate the curvature there a little bit. A very effective technique, rather than trying to build it up with bricks, which would have been very heavy, you know, visually heavy, very thick, or with wedge plates, which would have exposed some, some studs, which would not have looked good. I think this is a uh, very good choice here. The overall proportions are pretty good. It's so difficult to build things at this scale, but I think this was pretty well done. And again, it introduces, or at least uses, building techniques that I personally, as a LEGO fan, just uh, found joyous to, to, to follow along with in the instructions. There's a little bit of upside down construction in here as, as well uh, for the, the cone section up at the top but it all goes together pretty well it's almost completely symmetrical it's not quite in the way that it's built but uh, it, it's difficult to to see that it is not so or, you know, overall the whole thing is giving a pretty good display from every angle the least uh, the least attractive part of this i think is just the use of these these vertical uh, bar pieces on the back of the Bellagio, but otherwise, you know, detail, level of detail, and level, level of completion is fairly good all around. The last complex at the end there is the Fremont Street experience with some of the surrounding structures. Uh, this needs to be small relative to everything else, but I think it was a good choice to go with this specific 2x4 fully round, round-topped uh, brick the fully convex one uh, to show the, the the screen tent I forget the official name of that it has all the the screen on the inside of it uh, I think it's the the world's largest display of its kind and yeah I think this captures the area pretty well maybe not the most iconic looking thing from the Las Vegas skyline as small as it is but this represents the birthplace of Las Vegas as we know it today. And in the instructions, they give you a little bit of the history about you know, how, how things started here in terms of the, the industrial buildup or the, the commercial buildup of the place and the infrastructure buildup. So it makes sense to include it here. Overall, this was an enjoyable building experience for me. What I liked least about assembling it was putting together the one by one uh, plates through the fairly repetitive construction for the different floors of, of the Encore there. But again, as long as you have a, a hard, flat surface, you can always just use that. You know, press everything against it, get everything lined up neatly. Use the back of your, your finger nail to help to align the pieces across. And yeah, you, you'll get through it. And if you like what you see here in the video, I think that you will like what you see in person. The colors uh, have good contrast, especially this lighter than, than medium blue, kind of powder blue color used over here. I think uh, light royal blue they refer to it as officially. Just has a very nice chromatic quality to it, especially against the white that helps things to stand out uh, with just the, the fountain area down here, the water. There's just a lot of kind of crystal effect with the way the the light refracts through there and you get some little highlights and everything. The overall proportions are pretty nice. Maybe the stratosphere looks a little bit large and a little bit thick, but again, I don't think they could have done a much better job than, than they did. LEGO architecture sets are almost always very, very expensive for 
their size for their bulk sometimes the price to part ratio looks like it makes sense but you know you have to be real there are a ton of just tiny one by one plate pieces used in this and many of the architecture sets so you don't really get a good deal on on any of these or, or on almost any of them but uh, you know it's it's all it's all relative I think that relative to others in this skyline series this one does provide pretty good value uh, for you for your dollar again relatively speaking and definitely provides good display value in my personal opinion those are my thoughts and that's my look at the set though hope you enjoyed this i'll talk to you again as soon as i can thank you for watching